Let's start by changing the eye color. So I change it to blue and the original is a greenish color, right? Let me deactivate this layer. Let's create this again. We've got our base layer. Now we're going to duplicate that layer. And then uh, this layer needs a mask because we are just going to address the eyes. Now there are several ways how you can do this. You can either use the pen tool and then just go around the eyes like so. Hold control, click the first point, click enter. And then you will see these moving ons. You have to do the same thing for the other eye as well. And then go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste as new layer. And then we've just got the eyes as layers, right? So that's one way how to do it. But in this case, I'm just going to show you a different way how to do it. So let's just delete that layer. Let me go to select none. Let me get the move tool so we get rid of the path. All right, so we're going to click the right mouse button and then we're going to go to add a layer mask. And in this case, we're going to use the black one, the full transparency one. We are going to add it. And then with this layer selected, we are going to go to the brush Make sure that it's white and then change the size accordingly and just paint over the eyes. Now you won't see anything happening, but the magic will happen in a few moments. So let me do this eye as well. Then when I select this layer, so the one that's beneath this mask and I go to colors and I go to hue and I change the hue, you see that the colors of the eyes are now changing. Now let me show you how that looks. So here's a before, here's an after. And now the colors have changed. Right, second edit that I wanted to show you is this. So this is the original image. And then let me enable this mask. This is what I made from it. So once again, here's the original and here's the image once I'm done with that. So let me remove that mask real quick. And now you see that we need some work to do. Right, so what's important to do is that the sky layer is beneath your original layer because we are going to remove this part so that the layer beneath it will be visible. So once again, right mouse button, add layer mask, and we're going to use white, full opacity, because that will still show us the original image. Now what we can do is with this mask selected, we can change this from white to black, get our brush again. And then because this is a fairly big space we can use a bigger brush I'm going to keep the hardness on 10 but for the beginning because we've got so much area to work with we can actually make it a bit harder and a bit more force so that it will be more visible now let me increase it and now let's paint over this and you see that the layer beneath it starts to show up okay now the tricky part about this is that you have to make sure that this image blends in perfectly with the original image that's beneath this. And for that, I recommend changing the hardness to 10 and the force to 10 as well. And then changing the brush size, obviously. And then just zoom in your image and just paint over the edge like so. So that you get like soft edges. And what's great about this is that you can actually have clouds come in front of the mountain, right? To make it blend in even more and even better because right now it looks like the cloud is wrapping around the mountain okay now do that for the entire image i'll save you guys the time do that for the entire image and then your end result will look something like this next effect adding text i right now i thought that freshly brewed would be nice to add to this image now let me deselect that all you have to do is go up here to the text tool Make sure it's white or any other color. If you want to change the color, just click in here and then you can change it to any color that you like. I'm going to click inside the image. I'm going to type in freshly brewed, control A to select everything. I'm going to increase the size. This is a very big image. So I've increased it by 500. Now let me drag this in place. And right now you see that you really can't read this properly. So let's just create an outline by going to the right mouse button, alpha to selection, and then select grow. Let's grow this by three pixels. Create a new layer. That's very important. Let's call this grow text one. And I'm going to go to edit, fill with background color because that's black. And then just drag this beneath the text layer. Now, if you go to select none, that's always important. Once you're done doing an effect, go to select none. After you've selected something, you will see that the text is now better visible. Now we can do this again, alpha to selection, select, grow. Let's grow it by six. Another layer, grow text two. Let's change this color to red because that was what I was using in the example. 
edit, fill with foreground color, drag it beneath it, select none again, and there you go. That looks much better. The text is better visible than when it was just white. And this is how you can easily add in text and do some effects to it. The next tip is to add realism, right? So here's the original image and this is after I'm done with it. Now let me deselect that layer. It's fairly easy actually. So right now we've got some lights and I want them to glow. Right now there's not any glow at all. So I'm going to add in a new layer. We can call this anything, but let's call this lighting because we are going to light the image some more. We're working with a different types of colors here. So I'm going to address the tail lights first. I'm going to click on the brush. I'm going to make sure that the hardness is set to 10 or just a low amount actually. Then we can change the size accordingly. I'm going to increase it and then just tap around it, right? Just tap around it and we can do the same thing for the things in the background, the lights in the backgrounds as well. Now I want to match those colors. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to click this pen tool and that will allow me to click inside here and that will show which color this is. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to increase the brush size and I'm going to add in some glow here as well. These are actually almost the same type of color. So that's fine by me. I'm going to do the same thing for the blues. I'm going to add some glow there as well. Now, if we deactivate the layer, this is a before, this is an after, and that looks much, much better. Now, the final one is how to remove a green screen the easy way. Right now we have a green screen and I want to show something on this laptop screen, right? So that requires us to remove the green part of this image. Now, all you have to do is make sure that it's selected and then go to this tool, the fuzzy select tool. Click inside the screen. And before we are going to delete this, I want to teach you something because every time you select something, there's usually like a small border, right? So if you go to select and then grow, and let's grow this by two pixels, you see that now we've got a proper edge, okay? Now you need to make sure that you have add alpha channel selected so that this is an alpha channel because that means that the background of this will be transparent, okay? Now, once you've done that and you still have this selected, click delete and now you see it's gone. Go to select none and now you should add in an image by going to file, open or what you could do is you could just get a snippet from a website. So in this case, let's just go to my YouTube, right? And I'm going to use the snip tool. I'm going to create a snippet and then I'm going to edit, copy, go back to GIMP, go to edit, paste as new layer. And now you see that it's on top of this. Now we need to grow this. So I'm going to increase the size, scale. We don't want it to be on top of this layer. We need to have this beneath this layer. And now you see that this is showing on the laptop screen. Now you still see some greens over here. So we could actually grow the selection with a few more pixels. But to save you guys some time, I'm not going to do that. So to make sure that this blends in more, you can change the colors up here, go to colors, change the brightness and the contrast. Usually a laptop screen is a bit more dim. I'm going to make it flat, look flat. And then this is how it looks. So we've got a laptop screen showing my YouTube channel. And these were the five tips in GIMP that I wanted to show you real quick.